Hmm. I don't think I consciously knew that I was doing anything extraordinary or whatnot. I just knew, I guess, for where I was, I was in, I don't want to say it's such a bad place. I just didn't want to be there. Sure. So my escape from work was staying up till 2 a.m., working yeah. on something else. Yeah. By doing that made my days, I guess, tolerable. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even like it was a burden for me to stay up that late. It wasn't something I, I shut it away from. It was actually something I embraced. That was my yeah. therapy. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Today we've got... Ted Faton. And we are the Sales Wolves. Ow! That's pretty good. I think yours is better than mine. <laughs> I don't know. I've got a lot of practice. Because yeah. this is episode... 103. 103. Pabs from the corner. <laughs> yelling out 103 or whispering... It's episode 103, and this is an extremely important episode because I have a feeling it's going to hit home with a lot of you. I don't know about you, but I've been in this situation, and you may be in the situation right now where I felt like the job that I was doing, the career path that I was on, wasn't where I was supposed to be. It wasn't necessarily where I saw myself five years from now, ten years from now, certainly not where I saw myself for the rest of my life. And uh, I wanted to bring on Ted to tell his story because he is someone that was in that situation as well. And he took massive action to change his circumstance. And now he's doing what he loves doing. And he's able to do other things on the side that really fit into his absolute passion so that he can live life on purpose. So uh, first thing, Ted, thank you for being on. Oh, thank Sales you for having podcast. me. Yeah. Um, tell everybody just a quick little background, uh, who you are, what you do, where you're from, and then let's dive into that story. Yeah, sure. So uh, from New York, Long Island, born and raised. I went to school to SUNY Albany. That's only important because my major was broadcast meteorology. Okay. So I, I studied weather. After college, worked at a law firm for a while, which we'll, we'll jump into a little bit more, but then uh, eventually got my shot on TV in Saginaw, Michigan, and from there made it to Greenville, South Carolina, where I started off as the weekend meteorologist. And after my contract was up, an opportunity came up to be the morning anchor, co-anchor for the morning news Monday through Friday. It's a pretty good gig. It was a challenging gig. Mm. And I've been doing that for two years and since then have started a a podcast on the side and working on some personal ventures and stuff. We do some things with the modern man together. And uh, something tells me it's just the beginning. Yeah. So let's let's go back. So so you went to school. Mm Mm-hmm. To be a meteorologist. Yeah. How did that come about? Like, like, <laughs> did, did you always just? Uh, I was gonna use this joke of have your head in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I didn't. <laughs> it was actually funny because um, I actually just answered this question. I actually went to school for computer science. Got it. I used to build. I built my computer in high school. Okay. And I was supposed to go to Penn State. That didn't work out. They didn't give me enough money, so I went to SUNY Albany. And instead of computer engineering. I went into computer science thinking it was similar and the same. Okay. Found out the hard way it was not. Got it. After my freshman year, a combination of freedom, partying, and not <laughs> being invested in what I was studying, sure. I had a 1.9 GPA. Mm-hmm. I was on academic probation. Wow. And um, literally, I was on vacation with some friends, and we were in North Carolina. I saw a bird dive in the ocean. Huh. I started going off on like weather and stuff. And they're like, huh. we have a great meteorology program. And I think I took a sip of my drink, and I was like, do that. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. Yeah. And so from there, so that was freshman year? Oh, uh, yeah. That change? was the summer after freshman year. I okay. made the change. So going into your sophomore year. Mm-hmm. So went to school to be a meteorologist, and then that didn't really pan out oh, right yeah. after school. <laughs> yeah, not exactly. Graduated thinking next step is get a job as a meteorologist, yeah. right? Next step is the Today Show. And sure. We're on our way. <laughs> Al Rogers, step aside. Yeah. Which is so funny because when you mentioned that, I remember when I graduated, my friend said something. It's like, Ted, you're 90% of the way there. But I heard that last 10% sucks. <laughs> that's, that's, that's a good way. And he couldn't be more right. I graduated and I couldn't get a TV job. I couldn't get a TV job everywhere. I wanted experience. How do I get experience if, I, if no one hires me? Sure. I sent my resumes to every city in America. And the way it works in the TV business is you're, you're sending your, your resumes 
to small towns. Mm -hmm. Fargo, North Dakota, which is wow. one of the coldest places mm -hmm. in the United States. Um, and I was trying every trick in the book. When I say trick, I'd send a DVD, and uh, this is back when you don't send YouTube links, yeah. you send <laughs> DVDs. And uh, you know how like there's like a menu screen for mm -hmm. the DVD? Well, after sending about 50 DVDs, I kind of wanted to get a rise out of these people. <laughs> and I realized there's no music to any of these DVDs. So I literally started sending it, and whenever somebody popped in the DVD and opened it up, first thing they heard was, it's raining I was, men. That's exactly what I was <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> that's awesome. So that was my, my attempt to be different, but um, yeah, it didn't work, and I was stuck at that law firm for about three years. Okay, and so at the law firm, a law firm that was, uh, was it a friend of your dad that was yeah. there? And so you found yourself in a job, not a career, that you didn't quite anticipate. Mm -hmm. But in the beginning, I mean, were you were you making the most out of it? Honestly, I don't think I ever made the most out of it. Got it. Um, when I first started, we I worked there during the summer. We okay. used to do maintenance around the office, and after my senior year, the boss said, "Hey, you know, there's there's a position to work in a full time capacity while you search for a meteorology job." And hmm. I think I was under the impression, like, "Hey, this is going to be temporary." Yeah. You know, this is going to be temporary, and he said, "Cool, we'll stay as long as you need." And after about six months to a year, it started looking more and more like it wasn't so temporary hmm. anymore. And uh, they actually pulled me in the office at one point and asked, how serious are you about this meteorology thing? Like, how much do you really want to be uh, a weatherman? And I said, why? And they said, oh, well, you know, you can go to law school, get your, get your law degree, and you can always make a good career as a lawyer. And my job at the law firm was billing clerk. Yeah. So I would log the hours. Okay. So I knew what the lawyers did. <laughs> yeah. And I saw their cars. They drove nice cars and all that. But for some reason, like, I asked for some time to consider it. And, of course, my friends, family, girlfriend at the time, they're all like, do it. Like, yeah, go, sure. be a lawyer. And I was like, nah, like, hmm. I, I won't be happy. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's a good career. It's a good job. And nothing against the law firm because it was a great law firm. It just wasn't for me. I wasn't built for a cubicle. So um, I respectfully declined and continued to work there and started plotting my way to, uh, on how to get out. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about that. So at that point, you had to really get, not that you weren't serious before about finding a job in meteorology, but at that point, you were kind of faced with, okay, I've got to find something now. Yeah. And so how did that change like your normal job search activities? So... I think, if I'm being honest with myself, the first year, I don't think I took it too seriously. Okay. Like, I sent out a lot of resumes sure. and sent out a lot of tapes, but I never kind of put the mirror up and thought about, hey, maybe I'm doing something wrong. Sure. So the first thing I did after about a year or so was I called the station that I interned at my senior year, and I asked to come up for a weekend hmm. and, and refilm a demo reel. So I was like, okay, I'm not getting a job, and the first thing they look at is my demo reel. Maybe I need to step my game up. Sure. So I went up, refilmed, started sending that out. Still didn't get any bites, and uh, the frustration really started to settle in. Uh, kudos to my boss at the time because he was all he was all about it. He sure. was all about me trying whatever I could. So I would actually I found out a lot of the cases we did. There were a lot of cases that were weather related, huh. and the the National Climactic Data Center. It's the only weather data that could be used in the court of law. Hmm. And they would get these, these certificates from, from them, and it would be these pages of weather data, and the lawyer wouldn't know what to do with it. <laughs> He'd sit there for hours yeah. like looking through it, and I just remember seeing it, and I was like, I, can, I could type that up in a memo for you. And what would take the lawyer hours to do, I'd bust out in like 20 That's minutes. Awesome. And I'd just send them, send them a memorandum. And they loved it. Mm -hmm. So I started doing that, kind of being like the weather consultant for cases started giving the forecast over the loudspeaker in the mornings. <laughs> awesome. And then uh, I got an idea with me and a few of my friends. And I'm like, hey, I had a little flip camera and you know, there's weather going on around. Um, why not start our own website? We called it CheckZaza.com. I went to my boss and said, hey, let's incorporate a company, <laughs> Zaza Interactive Media. And uh, so we, we incorporated that. It was me and three of my friends, um, which I learned a lot from that. But long story short, we ended up putting our money together we got a camera um got a website up and i would forecast i would wake up before work 
and uh, I made little slides off of Photoshop and I would forecast before work and I would hmm. make the forecast coincide with events that were happening on Long Island. Yeah. And then we would go out with the cameras and film those events. That's awesome. And uh, that was kind of like the way we kind of pulled it all together. Dude, that's, that's so incredible because number one, in the very beginning, being able to find that way to use your passion in the place where you were currently, which wasn't, that was very outside of the box, <laughs> to be able to take these weather reports and then be able to be useful with it, like mm -hmm. to use what you had, the talent that you had, the skills that you had, to be useful for the, for the attorneys there. And so that's one thing, but then to be able to completely go outside the box and basically get, say, okay, if these people need experience, I'm gonna show them experience. It's mm -hmm. not experience on a station, but it's it's experience. Yeah. And, and really, I think so much of, probably in that process, looking back, what they really wanted to see is that you could do the job. And you basically just started doing the job mm -hmm. and filming it and showing them. So now they had like a track record they could go back and they could envision what would Ted look like if he was on air here? Yeah. Because they had all this footage of you going out there and doing it, which is, I mean, brilliant. So it's like it solves that catch-22 of, well, I need experience to get the job, but I need the job to get experience. Mm -hmm. You went out and just created the job experience out of nowhere. Yeah, I built incredible. the garden for me to grow in. Yeah, that's just so cool. And so I would have to imagine that when ultimately it was Saginaw mm -hmm. is where you went to, I would have to imagine as they were looking at, so you sent them basically like a portfolio or like a, what would you call it, a reel of yeah. all these videos kind of compiled and mashed up. I'm imagining so, they're looking at that and they're probably thinking like, number one, the guy has skills, mm -hmm. but there probably was a little bit of like, they were impressed with your like imagination to just create this on your own. Yeah. And they're like, well, if he's, if he's this, willing to go all in, then he's probably something we should mm -hmm. bet on. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, a lot of people ask, it's like, oh, was, so was Zaza Interactive Media a success? And it wasn't. It was a terrible failure. Sure. Uh, we were, I was the bad leader. I'll, 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 take, <laughs> I'll take the brunt of that. And because I was a bad leader, we, were, we didn't have any direction. Because we didn't have any direction, we didn't make any money, lost money. But what it did was it showed initiative and it showed yeah. work ethic and dedication. And even to the point of the videos that I did, looking back, they weren't that good. But what it showed, what I think set me apart from other applicants was I had the initiative. Mm -hmm. I was doing this on my own. So yeah. if someone's gonna offer to pay me to do the weather, if, they're gonna, if I'm asking somebody to pay me to do something and I tell them I'm already doing it for free, hmm. that, kind of shows the person like, this is somebody that's ready to work. Yeah. I think it was Eric Thomas that said, he said, you won't be successful until I don't have to pay you to do what you do. Mm -hmm. And I kind of showed them that I'm already prepared to do this yeah. and make this my life. I'm just waiting for you guys to, I guess, foot the bill. <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. And so, so talk about how uh, you got from Saginaw to Greenville. Okay, um, so that was another one with uh, creativity with the website. Okay. Um, I got to Saginaw, and the way that contract worked, it was a one-year contract. Okay. So it was literally like, let's see what you got. Yeah. You know? And it was about eight months in or so, and my boss came and said, there's a job opening for the weekend meteorologist program uh, position in Greenville, South Carolina. Do you want me mm -hmm. to put your name in for it? I said, yeah, absolutely. Let's go. He walks out of the office, and the first thing I do, I go to my computer. I'm like, where the hell is Greenville, <laughs> South Carolina? Awesome. I was in that mindset. I didn't yeah. care where it was. Sure. I'm, put me in. Yeah. So I look it up, and I thought I was going to be by the beach. I thought I was going to be you know, kicking up in the sand yeah. and everything, yeah. but not the case, which I love Greenville. Yeah. But um, he put my name in, and I didn't hear anything for two, three weeks, four weeks. And then uh, I, I knock on his door, and I was like, hey, whatever happened to that job in Greenville, South Carolina? He goes, oh, I never heard back from the news director. Uh, this, is, this is her email if you want to contact mm -hmm. her yourself. And I knew he sent a resume. Yeah. And remember I told you back in the day we were sending DVDs? Mm -hmm. Well, times change and they change quick. Sure. And you got to change with the time. So I had a website made. I don't think my boss at the time knew that. Got it. But I had tedfayton.com and I just emailed the news director. I said, hey, this is everything in a link. 
Here's my cover letter, awesome. my resume, my videos, all on a website. Sent the email, she called me 45 minutes later. Wow. Well, she emailed me back and asked to talk on the phone. So we're talking on the phone 45 minutes later. And after a 30 minute phone call, she says, I wanna fly to Greenville next week. That's awesome. Now, was that, was that normal the way, was it your boss that came to you and told you about Greenville initially? Yeah. Or so, someone that was in a higher position? So the way it was for my contract, it was called like a trainee position. Got it. So it wasn't okay. even a guaranteed position. Okay. And it was for our, our corporation, which has multiple television stations. Mm -hmm. So the way they work is they work closely so they can tell when another station needs somebody. Okay. So it was a sister station. So yeah. it was more of a transfer than a new job. Got it. Yeah, because okay. I'm just thinking, you know, how fortunate looking back that to be in in the law firm with a boss that was so accommodating and so supportive mm -hmm. of your dream and what you wanted to do, mm -hmm. and then being even in that situation where you know you're working there and a better opportunity comes and and this guy's coming to you and telling you immediately about it, which ultimately got got you down here. Yeah. The biggest thing I want to know is going from meteorology to the uh, anchor position. So how did that come about? And what was that process of, obviously you've got this passion for meteorology and that's your, that's your at that point, that's your career path. Yeah. And it's a complete change. Mm -hmm. And so what was that process like and in, in that decision making process? Yeah, so the decision making process actually didn't take me too long. And you know, to nod what you said with the bosses, I think the biggest thing that helped me through the years was transparency. Okay. I never tried to hide anything. Sure. I, I was kind of just like, listen, I always look at this. If I'm working for somebody, it, my job is to, to do the job and, and help your business out as best as I can. And that's what I'm here for. Yeah. But when you, I mean, they're people. Sure. So my, my current boss knew what my, my plan was knew that I, I wanted to look for a challenge. When my contract was up at Weekend Meteorologist, I thought I outgrew that. And I was looking for a challenge. I was hoping to be Monday through Friday. And she literally said, oh, what about morning anchor? Because the position opened up. And I, like, I was like, but I'm a meteorologist. <laughs> and she was kind of like, well, you said you wanted a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, it scared me, man. Yeah. I, I don't like reading out loud. Yep. I'm a terrible reader out loud. I'm a slow reader. And uh, when she said that, like all I saw was all my weaknesses laid out on the table in front of me. And it's also like my ambition is to eventually, you know, maybe have my own show one day. Yeah. First time I'm actually saying that, be That's recorded. Awesome. But awesome. like in my mind, I'm like, well, if you want to have your own show, you're going to have to read prompter. Like, yeah, sure. You're going to have to do these things. So it scared me. And I was like, this is what scares me and this is the obstacle to what my dream is. So I got to run head first into it. And was, is that a normal progression that happens in news stations? Um, taking like a, a sports guy or mm -hmm. a meteorologist or, or someone and then them becoming an anchor, is that a normal yeah. process? It's not unheard of, okay. but it's, it's not, it doesn't happen a lot. Okay. So um, for, for me to have that opportunity, I think um, for my boss to even see that in me, yeah. I'm, I'm grateful for. And I'm lucky to have that. So let's talk about the very first morning on air. <laughs> what was that like? So I was supposed as, to, as the anchor. As I was anchor. supposed to ease into it, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it never happens like that. You yeah. always get thrown into the fire. And it was supposed to be like, hey, you know, hard news and light news, they're different. So we're going to start you with the light news stories. Mm -hmm. And then we'll ease you into the hard news stories. Well... Uh, one of my first days on air, I'm never going to forget it. It was, was when the Todd Kohlhepp story broke. Okay. And for anybody that doesn't know who Todd Kohlhepp is, uh, was a serial killer, a uh, convicted serial killer now um, in South Carolina. And Caleb Brown was just found. All that was just blowing up. Wow. And the co-anchor, the morning anchor, got sick. <laughs> Calls in sick. And I come in, and it's like, hey... Not only do you have to anchor hard news, you have to do it solo for the first hour and a half. Is that cool? <laughs> wow. <laughs> and we, we got through it, man. That's the yeah. only way I can say. We got sure. through it. But there were a lot of speed bumps, a lot of bumps and, and uh, oopsies along the way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I mean, those are 
those are the scars that make me better, I guess. It's probably the best way. To, I mean, just just, <laughs> just diving, head yeah, first, just ripping that bandaid off. I love that. Um, so, man, what advice would you give to someone that's listening to this or watching this mm-hmm. that may be in a job that, just like you, you know, isn't a long term deal that they're just maybe feeling as though they're buying time yeah. until the opportunity that they're looking for comes, but maybe getting to that stage where they've been buying time for a long time. Yeah. And where now this, what they thought was temporary position is starting to feel mm-hmm. permanent. Yeah. And what would you tell that person um, in regards to going after their dream and going after what they ultimately feel like they're supposed to be doing? I think first thing is making a plan. And I think that plan can be instilled in many ways. For me, it was when I asked one of the paralegals, like, oh, how long have you been here? And she's, oh, like 11 years. I said, oh, how'd that happen? And her little, her answer was, well, I graduated and, you know, I got married, had kids, and the next thing you know, I'm here. And that scared me. <laughs> and that, that put urgency. And that's when I was like, yeah. okay, I need to start figuring out how to get out of here. And that's when the plan started coming together. So first I'd say she make a plan. I just said like, I just blinked. And <laughs> 11 years went by. Yeah. <laughs> and like, but that just, that scared yeah. me because oh, yeah, at that time, I think about a year had gone by already. And that, I realized a year went by like that. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm on the, I'm on the same track. So making a plan is number one. Number two, you asked if I made the best of it. And I said, I I didn't really until towards the end Mm -hmm. when I, when I kind of made another mental switch to really take responsibility and, and up my abilities. Um, that's when I kind of put more work in and asked for a raise and I ended up getting a raise at work, which allowed me outside of work to do more. Got it. So by putting a little bit more in at the law firm, I was able to get the raise, which allowed me to live by myself, which actually, when I lived by myself, I was more focused. I applied to more places. Mm -hmm. I worked on more things. And that's what ultimately got me a job. Mm -hmm. So I would say um, increase your value at where you're at and make a plan. And then start a a side hustle. Start doing what it is you want to do for free. Yeah, that's that's what I was just going to say. So let me touch on that real quick or, or dig a little deeper. So when you were doing, when you had the website mm-hmm. and now all of a sudden you're, you're going around, you're filming stuff, you're, you're filming the, the forecast in the morning. What was the, the daily kind of time at work during that phase? And then what was the extra time that you were spending doing the other stuff? It was like eight to five or nine to five and you were yeah. getting up early or doing it late or what? So, um, the job itself, it was it was billing. So it's supposed to be uh, 9 to 5, or 9 to 5.30. And as my boss would always say, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, if you're late. If you're <laughs> yeah, late, don't yeah, even yeah. come. So it was really like 8.50 to 5.30. <laughs> but the beginning of the month, the first week of the month, and the last week of the month, that's when you're sending out invoices, sure. making invoices, and receiving them, and putting them in. So that would require overtime. So yeah. I would sometimes work from 8.50 in the morning. So there's been times... My boss is ordering dinner because we're there at seven, mm-hmm. eight o'clock. Yeah. Um, that's kind of at the bookends of the month. I would wake up at six and give myself an hour, about 30 minutes to make a forecast, another okay. 30 minutes to kind of make the graphics and then record it for wow. 30 minutes. So I'd give them an hour and a half before work each day. Okay. And then after that, when I got home, when I finally got home, I'd work on the website and my mom would come down the stairs. I, I lived in the basement of my parents' house. Yeah. And I remember my mom coming down the stairs. I'm going to imitate my mom. She's like, <laughs> Dad, go to sleep. You're killing yourself. You need to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Mom, I'm working on something. <laughs> so it sometimes would be like 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. yeah. But I think that's so important for people to hear because you, know, you may be in a place where you don't feel like you belong right now in your job. And there may be these other things that you want to do. And my response is, well, then prove it. Mm-hmm. Like, prove it outside of the hours that you're in the place where you don't think you're supposed to be. Yeah. Like, you're like, you have to put forth the effort to prove that you should be in that place before you're just handed it. Like, yeah. the opportunity of a lifetime is not going to fall in your lap. People don't just stumble upon the opportunity of a yeah. lifetime. Well, what's so crazy about it? Like, when I look back on it, I don't think I consciously knew how much extra I was doing. Hmm. I don't think I consciously knew that I was doing anything extraordinary or whatnot. I just knew, I guess, for where I was, I was in, 
I don't want to say it's such a bad place. I just didn't want to be there. Sure. So my escape from work was staying up till 2 a.m., working yeah. on something else. Yeah. By doing that made my days, I guess, tolerable. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't even like it was a burden for me to stay up that late. It wasn't something I, I shuddered away from. It was actually something I embraced. That was my yeah. therapy. Yeah. And it's something that has stayed true to, to present day. Mm-hmm. Like present day now, you're, you're working on things on the side that, that also are able to capitalize on the different gifts that you have, the different passions that you have, but may not always feel like work because you enjoy it. Yeah. And it's your way of, of, of being able to go all in outside of the, the normal job. But, you know, people would look at that and they say, well, all this guy does is work. It's like, no, like I enjoy doing that stuff. Mm-hmm. I enjoy doing the podcast. I enjoy doing my e stuff. Like this is, this is what I do for fun. It just also happens to put me in a position where I want to be long term. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, to, to kind of wrap this up, it's such an interesting story, and I think people are going to get so much out of it because, again, so many people are in that position um, where they don't feel like th- they are where they're supposed to be, and there's this like certain like milestones, like I'm 21 or I'm 30 mm-hmm. or I just turned 40 and I just turned 50. Like you start getting close to those different milestones, and you're like, man, I'm just not where I I feel like I was supposed to be at 30, mm-hmm. right, or, or at 40 or, or whatever that is. So what's like the last, what's the last piece of advice that you would give someone that's in a place right now where they just don't feel like, you know, looking at their life that they are where they, they're supposed to be? I think, cause I'm, I'm guilty of, you know, I was at the law firm, I'm like, I'm 23 by now, I'm supposed to not be living with my parents, I'm supposed to have money in the bank. And I was living with my parents, had no money in the yeah. bank. Um, I think the advice I would give is you'll be shocked at how fast things can change for you. Mm. You'll be shocked at how fast your current situation can change. And when I say fast, I don't mean overnight. Mm -hmm. I mean in a matter of years. But when you look back at your college years, you look back at your high school, even if you look back at the last year, in hindsight, it goes by faster than you think. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people look at, it's going to take me two years to build this. So they look at it and think, maybe I shouldn't do it. Those two years are going to go by anyway. Yeah. And the only thing that's going to happen is two years later, you're going to regret not doing it. Mm-hmm. The, the two best times to plant a tree is 20 years ago mm-hmm. or right now. Yeah. And I think the best thing I can tell people, best advice is if you don't like where you are right now, don't harp on it. Don't compare it to somebody else. Compare it to yourself where you are and just take one step forward tomorrow and then do it again the day after that and look back three years from now and give me a call. Let me know where you're at. That's awesome. And, and there's a big if in there, a big if. Like things can change fast. Things can change quickly if you're willing to put in the work and do something about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Because nothing's going to change. What is it? Nothing changes if nothing changes. Yeah. And radical change requires <laughs> radical change. Um, and that's the encouragement from this podcast that I want you guys to hear is that things can happen quickly. Things mm-hmm. can change rapidly if you're willing to go above and beyond what you're doing now and and see some different results in your life and again like it's your life like yeah. you should probably take it seriously like like this is like this is forever <laughs> and that's know? the thing like, it's crazy you don't always have to know where you're going yeah. if you would have told me 2 years ago or 3 years ago I was going to be an anchor I wouldn't have thought sure. that so just taking the steps forward working on yourself and working on something a path will end up laying itself out yeah and then looking back, I would say that your website was definitely a success. Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that is episode 103 of the Sales Wolves podcast. Uh, so blessed to have Ted with us here in the studio Thank in you, Greenville. And uh, with that, I am your host, Tyler Harris. Ted Featon. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh! <laughs>